Hey folks, welcome back. Today I want to talk about Plug Data and it's been a while since I talked about it last time on this channel. And I think last time we created some kind of looper or we exported a VST or Clap plugin. I'm not really sure. But I want to talk about what's changed since then, right? And a lot of things in there are great ideas, game-changing ideas. And in my opinion, VST plugins are kind of may or not interesting anymore because you get this small little vst package and you can't look into it you can't change it you can't take things out of it and use it somewhere else right you have this small little great sexy ui looking package that you buy uh, but you are kind of stuck with it right so plug data goes in different directions it's a patcher we can create your, our own patches in there with a lot of modules and patch these things together. Create interfaces here, put it into a plug-in view. We can use a scalar here, right? And can create our own kind of small plug-ins in a different way. So that's neat and great. And what I really like about plug data is that it's come some kind of collection of great open source projects. So you can see on the right side, we are using Plug Data version 0.9.2. It's a nightly build and it's based on pure data. So pure data is a visual programming language kind of, but it's not really sexy. It's not really usable. It's very, you know, ugly almost. And uh, Plug Data uses this here in a kind of a sexy GUI environment to make it more accessible. It also uses here libraries like ELSE or Cyclone, which kind of is, um, you know, a collection of modules. So this one here, this uh, module I'm using here, all pass reverb, is an ELSE. Let me open this here. Yeah, it's an old ELSE module. So it's a collection of great open source uh, projects. It also uses your gem and heavy lib and heavy is basically the compiler. So you, it allows you to compile um, VST plugins or clap plugins from this patch. Um, I showed you this in a video here. There's also um, a, a video channel dedicated to this heavy lib compiler by the creator of heavy lib. I put you the link in the description below, of course. It also uses here PT Lua. So if you are familiar with uh, the programming language Lua, there's an object now in here where you can use uh, Lua to create audio processes or graphics or you know animations. We can do this now in Plug Data just with this small little addition here of this uh, uh, library. So it's almost like a small great sexy collection of open source projects and i really like this idea right to bring it all under one roof instead of instead of having all these single um yeah projects doing on their own so um so here we have this overview right and i really like this overview because you can look into the patch you can see what's in there and i really like to have this here also in Bitwig for the grid. So you can have an idea what is this patch doing? How complex is it? Is it right? Uh, maybe a thumbnail also would be great if you could change here the thumbnail. Maybe you can do this. No, you can't do it. Um, so yeah, that's the overview. We can also create a new patch. We can open up a patch here from the directory. And there is now this new library button here. And that's really great for the user. So instead of creating stuff in here, maybe you are not familiar with the patching environment and you kind of hate to program stuff, you can head over to library and can create here a small little library of patches that you really like from other people. So to get something into Plug Data now, um, before we had to download stuff, put it in a directory. So now you have this, this discover button here and it opens up here some kind of yeah, library of plugins or patches that you can easily download. So here, for the instance, we have a disperser uh, patch. It's completely free. So you can click on it. You have an overview. You can also view it online if you want to. So we go here to the website of plugdata.org. That's a small little overview. It kind of roughly works in the same way like in VCV rec with modules. Um, so we have this overview here. You can see the release date, price is free, and we can 
Click this button here to download actually the stuff. Successfully installed the Spurs. Great. Go back and we have it now here in our local uh, library. We can click on it and we can use it. it looks like a plugin, right? Really great. We can also scale it if we want to. We can also open it up here and look into the patch and change some things, right? We can change the button. We can add a button. We can remove a button. We can certain, we can use some of these um, combinations of modules here and use it in our own projects. It's, it's really great. That's how it should be, in my opinion. You can learn, you can tweak, you can change it, you can, uh, you know, make it, make your patch public, you can download patches from other people. It's really great. That's how it should be, in my opinion. So um, let's go back here. So this is the plugin view. It looks like a real plugin, right? There's no Chrome or whatsoever. You have like all your small little um, dedicated um, knobs and interface elements. And we can say, instead of just going into plug data or calling up plug data, going into the library, click the right thing, right? We can say, let's save this here as a preset inside of Bitwig Studio. So I always say PD for plug data and let's call it Disperser, um, creator, polarity is not right, but I don't care. All you have X, right? It's probably digital, make a small, um, small description here, save it. And then it has here the name inside of Bitwig Studio. And next time we can call it up here, PD, Disperser, and boom, we are inside of this patch or this plugin. I want to say plugin because it's actually a plugin, right? And yeah, that's you have all the pros of um, of a modular environment because you can go into the patch, you can change it, right? And also all the pros of having a plugin because you can just open this up here as a preset and you are strictly or straight into uh, this interface here. You can change stuff. Let's see how it sounds. And change to the center frequency. Maybe make a short percussion percussion sound here. Yeah, you can hear it. So, um, really great idea to, to do it this way. And I wish we had something like this in um, Bitwig. Uh, you can see a disperser. We go in there and I actually open this up. What we have to use here. Yeah. You can see in there we have a lot of uh, Alpas modules here uh, in serial probably to create this uh, disperser effect. But you can learn. You can also learn from these uh, plugins then, right? You can dive into it and see what's going on. So this is the disperser. You can also use here a clipper or maybe here this. Uh, What's the name? T4PE Lite one knob wipe machine. Yeah, let's download this one. Installed, boom, boom. There we have it, wipe machine. You can use it. Make a longer sound now. Yeah, it's some pitch modulation there. Gives you some kind of flutter effect. Yeah, it's another module that you just downloaded just just with one click, right? Um, another great thing for creators is actually that you can use here a platform, right? If you want to create or if you have actually created some kind of a plugin before, a BST plugin, for instance, you know all the problems, right? You need, um, you need to code it. You need to um, create... Um, a dedicated GUI for all the platforms for Mac, for Windows, for Linux, and so on. And you don't need to do this here. You have this plug data platform that takes care of all these small little nuances from all these platforms. And all you have to do is to create your own patch and upload it to um, the plug data page, right? And other people can download it just by clicking your library and click discover click what they want and then they have it. So in my opinion, this is a game changer and I probably uh, use this a lot when this comes out here 
um, also the download stuff and also to create stuff, of course, because it's a, it's a nice platform, right? Um, it's easy to distribute stuff and easy to download. Um, okay, that's it for the library here. Um, we also have here, let's go into this one here. They also added here some kind of command input. This is really an interesting idea. So we have this patching environment here and we can create new modules pretty easy, right? Uh, but we can also now use this command input here. There's a help menu uh, with all the yeah, commands you can use. So for instance, we can use here canvas object 2050 metro 200, right? And this one uh, creates a metro object um, with 200 milliseconds uh, and at the 2050 coordinate, right? So it puts it on a certain point here on this canvas. So we can click this here and then it puts it into the input. Then we hit return and it creates here this metro object, right? So you can interact with the canvas not by only clicking here and dragging. You can also use now here the command input. You can also use your uh, Lua expressions like this for loop here. You can iterate over this evil here and create canvas objects, right? Let's hit return. You just created here a bunch of objects. So sometimes when you are in the grid, right, and you you have to create something, you have to create a lot of modules sometimes. And this makes it a lot easier just using here this command uh, thing. Uh, so this is the command input. Really great addition. I'm really happy with this. And there's also something I haven't tried out yet. Um, so maybe open up here the all pass again, which is already open, uh, sorry, um, this one here. So before I showed you in a video that you can uh, export export VST plugins, it's not working for the moment. I haven't installed the tool chain. I have to download the tool chain first. But now you can also export VST plugins with the GUI in there. They added this with a heavy lib compiler uh, recently. I haven't tried it out yet, but the video looked very great. I put you the link in the description below. So this is also new. We can now um, export a VST or CLAP plugin with a basic, very basic GUI. But you can also then export the source code and you can change the source code and change the uh, GUI to your liking, of course, if you want to. And then you can create really native VST and CLAP plugins just with a plug data. So in my opinion, it's a great package overall. It's also neatly packaged here with this interface. This interface is really top notch. I really like it. The interface designer is a is a good man. <laughs> they also uh, do here this store thing uh, with the overview here, all the uh, presets. They probably increase here. This is just a small, um, yeah, just a small collection of presets. There is more to come in the future, of course. Um, you can head over here to the plug data page, uh, then go to download. Then you can download here the stable version 0.9.1. But the version I showed you in this video here is the latest nightly. Uh, it's built yesterday, so it's completely fresh. But like I said, it's a nightly build. It's a beta. It's not probably working 100% correctly. There are things missing. So if you want to do some work, use the stable version. If you just want to, you know, explore a bit what's coming up here in the next version, then download the latest nightly version. And yeah, what they are doing here is something um, um, Placo, Cycling74 Placo did here. I have this website open. Um, they did this back in the day. So uh, this was before Ableton Live was buying here, it's in 2005. Um, this was before Ableton Live was buying uh, Cycling 74 or Max DSB, and then they killed off Placo. So Placo was basically a small little collection of 100 instruments and effects um, made in this kind of way. They are patched in Max DSB or in this pure data environment, and then they created um, small little plugins from that. But when they bought, when Ableton Live bought this here back in the day, they killed off this Placo uh, thing and made a lot of people sad, really sad. And yeah, Plug Data brings it back basically with this um, new patcher or with this new Discover feature. 
really great. I'm also a supporter of Plug Data, by the way, here. You can head over to the GitHub page here and go to sponsoring. Just leave a tip or maybe sponsor this here. I am here, $30 a month. This, that's my, that's my uh, donation basically for each month now for over a year. And they doing great things. It's a great project. I really love it. And yeah, give it a go. So um, that's it for this video, I think. Um, thanks for watching. Leave a like. I put all the links in the description below. And thanks to all the open source uh, creators. You do really a great job. I'm really loving it. And I, real, uh, I really want to cover this uh, project in the future more often. And I think it has a, a really bright future, in my opinion. It's, it's going to the moon next year, probably. So thanks for watching. Leave a like. See you next time. And bye.